Hello students. Today we are going to discuss an experiment on the determination of charge to mass ratio or the specific charge of an electron by helical method. The experiment will be demonstrated with the help of an instrument supplied by SES Instruments Private Limited. Finding the charge to mass ratio of an electron theoretically is very easy. Just put the value of charge of an electron and the mass of an electron in the ratio will get the value. But when we are do when we are attempting to do so practically, we need to find the charge of an electron experimentally, then the mass of an electron experimentally, and then we can determine the charge to mass ratio of an electron. This seems to be practically impossible and needs a very complex instrumentation. However, the charge to mass ratio can of an electron can be determined with the help of some parameters, external parameters which can be determined very easily. In order to do so, we have to express this E by M value of an electron in terms of parameters which can be determined experimentally. So in this instrumentation, we are supplied with an electron beam assembly. This is the schematic of the electron beam assembly. It consists of a cylindrical cathode. This cathode is heated by a heater placed coaxially. Upon heating the cathode, electrons are emitted as a result of thermionic emission. These electrons are guided into a beam with the help of a grid and anode. The electrons present in the beam can be supplied a kinetic energy by applying a certain potential difference across the anode and the cathode. So if a potential V is applied across the two electrodes of this electron beam assembly, the potential energy EV of the system will be transferred to the electrons in the beam as the electrons comes out of this anode. It can be expressed as this, where V stands for the potential applied across the cathode and the anode of the electron beam assembly. M is the mass of the electron, V is the velocity of the electron in the beam, and E is the charge of the electron. We can rewrite this expression in terms of V, the velocity of the electron, as this. If we allow this electron beam to pass through a magnetic field, it will experience a Lorentz force. If the magnetic field is exactly perpendicular to the direction of the to the direction of propagation of the electron beam, the beam will curl into a circular loop. For all angles other than 90 degree, the electrons in the beam will have a velocity component parallel to B. As a result of which it will curl in the form of a spiral. So for an angle 90 degree, we can rewrite the Lorentz force expression as EBV. We will use this expression for a further experimentation. We assume for this experiment, we, we keep the magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of propagation of the electron beam. If the electrons curl in the form of a circular loop, it will experience a centripetal force and that force will be provided by this Lorentz force component. So we can write another expression as this. Here R is the radius of the circular loop. So we can write V as EBR by M. We can compare this expression and this expression and write them together as this. Looking into the expression, it is clear that we can get an expression of E by M in terms of parameters like external parameters like V, B and R. V is the potential across the electrodes which we can measure with the help of a voltmeter. B is the magnetic field in the vicinity of the electron beam 
which we can measure with the help of an gauss meter and r is the radius of the circular loop which is formed due to this lorentz force and this radius can be measured with the help of a meter scale we can rewrite this expression in terms of diameter as this so by determining these external parameters we can get an expression for e by m determination of v is possible with the help of a voltmeter but determination of b becomes critical from a practical point of view because you have to place your hall probe in the vicinity of the electron beam the entire electron assembly is inside a discharge tube which is maintained at low pressure of an inert gas so putting a hall probe into that system will be difficult so now from practical standpoint or from practical point of view we have to express b in terms of other parameters which can be easily determined one way to do so is we can use an electromagnet to produce this constant magnetic field and if we do so we can express this value of b in terms of the current through the coil number of turns in the coil and the diameter of the coil the best way to generate a constant magnetic field is through a solenoid but then the practical limitation comes if we have a solenoid that is then we have to place our discharge tube inside the solenoid to get a constant magnetic field if we place our discharge tube inside the solenoid then measurement of d becomes difficult so one simplification can be done instead of using a solenoid we will use a helmholtz coil helmholtz coil is another practical arrangement where we can get a fairly uniform magnetic field between these two coils a helmholtz coil consists of two coils two similar coils having same radii same number of turns and to get and when they are separated by a distance equal to the radius of the coil the field between them is most stable we know the magnetic field at any axial point due to this circular loop which is at a distance d from the center of the loop is given by the expression this where a is the radius of the loop and n is the number of turns in the loop i is the current through the coil in the loop so if we want to find what is the effective magnetic field at the center of this coil then this d will be equal to a by 2 so putting d equal to a by 2 we can rewrite this expression as this now we get an expression so total magnetic field at the center of the helmholtz coil will be a magnetic field component due to this coil which is along this direction and another coil this coil second coil which is along this direction so the total magnetic field will be the magnetic field due to the left coil the magnetic field due to the right coil that is twice the magnetic field so we get an expression of magnetic field in terms of known parameter like number of turns of the coil current through the coil and the radius of the coil we replace b in the previous expression with this one and we get this simplifying the expression we get this the bracketed term consist of parameters constants and parameters which are constant throughout the experiment for example radius of the coil 
which is kept fixed in the experiment the number of turns in the coil rest parameters like voltage we can measure with the help of a voltmeter current we can measure with the help of a ammeter and diameter we can measure with the help of a meter scale in the present experimentation the instrument which we are using has an helmholtz coil having number of turns equal to 160 and the radius of the helmholtz coil is 0.14 meters putting this value these values in this expression we get an expression of e by m as 7.576 into 10 to the power 6 v by i square d square coulomb per kg really using this formula we can easily find the value of e by m in terms of v i and d so in the observation we have to determine the potential applied across the electrode the current through the helmholtz coil and the corresponding diameter of the electron beam formed due to these parameters well for a fixed potential for a fixed current we can determine one value of d and this gives you a value of e by m that can be a one shot measurement but then taking one data would lead to certain errors so it is always advisable to take a series of data and then find the mean of it one way of doing is we fix the current in the experiment as 1 amperes and then we measure the diameter of the electron beam as a function of applied potential across the electrode and we get the get the observation like this so we vary the potential from 10 volt to 200 volts we place our cross wire towards the left end of the loop and then towards the right end of the loop subtracting these two we get the diameter squaring it we get square of its diameter d square the value which we observe is in centimeter so we need to convert it into meter square and these are the values of diameter square for corresponding values of potential accelerating potential ap applied across the electrodes calculations so from the observation we can make a plot of v versus d square which is like this fitting it with a linear function we get the slope as 2.35 into 10 to the power 4 volts per meter square we put this value in this expression and we get a value of e by m as this from the ideal values of charge and mass of an electron the value of e by m comes out to be 1.76 into 10 to the power 11 coulombs per kg so the average deviation or percentage error in observed value from the ideal value comes around 1.14% as such the final result for the present set of readings is expressed as 1.78 into 10 to the power 11 plus minus 1.14% like all other experiments we have to take care of certain precautions while doing this experiment first is we should not leave the electron beam on for a lo for long periods of time the discharge tube should not be taken out of the socket we had already explained the discharge tube is fitted into a rotatable socket and it should not be taken out of the socket the main source of error in this experiment is the unequal field due to the geometry of the anode near the aperture through which the electron beam comes out all the electrons in the electron beam doesn't doesn't comes out with a single velocity as a result of which we get a band of a circle 
Also, it is advisable not to use potentials below 80 volt to avoid error in measurement and obviously not to go beyond 250 volts to avoid damage of the electron beam assembly. The current supplied to the electron through the Helmholtz coil should also not be exceeded beyond 2 ampere. Let us now see the actual demonstration of this experiment in our lab. So this is the experimental setup for the determination of specific charge or E by M of an electron by Thomson method. It consists of a bulb shaped discharge tube and at the center of this tube you can see there is an electron beam assembly. Through this assembly the electrons come out from the opening at the conical anode and you can see a greenish light can be seen coming out of the tip of the cone. The discharge tube is filled with helium gas at low pressure. The fast moving electrons coming out of the assembly excite these gas atoms in its path which upon de-excitation gives you this characteristic color. Now depending upon the gas in the discharge tube this color varies. For example in case of neon gas it will be red in color. In case of argon, it will be violet in color and so on. The idea behind using this inert gas is first to avoid oxidation of the cathode filament and second to get a visible light at locations where they are excited by the electrons. This visible light helps us to track the path of the electron in the discharge tube. The electron beam assembly provided here consists of a filament, a cathode, a grid and a conical anode followed with a pair of deflecting plates. Place just outside this anode to deflect the electron beam along its path. When we switch on the device, the filament heats up and with the help of the power supply provided below, we can apply a potential difference across the anode and the cathode of this electron beam assembly. So in this process the electrons produced by thermionic emission from the filament comes out of the aperture with certain kinetic energy. The grid and the anode have holes through which the electron can pass through it. The potential difference across the cathode and the anode can be adjusted using these two knobs. The first knob is used to adjust the range and the second knob is used to make adjustments within this range. This meter is used to see the amount of voltage applied across the two electrodes. Thus this meter helps us to record one parameter which is used for the measurement of E by M. The discharge tube is placed at the center of a Helmholtz coil. We know that the Helmholtz coil is meant to produce a constant magnetic field within the region between its two coils. The number of turns in the coil and the diameter of the coil is kept fixed. The current is supplied to the coils through a power supply which is placed within this control unit and it is controlled or the current is varied with the help of this knob. By adjusting the current, we actually adjust or control the magnetic field produced between these two coils. The discharge tube is placed exactly at the center of these two coils so as to ascertain that the electron beam is exposed to a fixed magnetic field. The tube is placed on a rotatable socket. A scale is provided on the socket which measures the angle by which the discharge tube is rotated. 
The idea behind rotating the discharge tube is to change the angle between the direction of propagation of electrons and the applied magnetic field. By rotating the discharge tube, thereby changing the direction of propagation of electrons and the applied magnetic field, the track can be changed from a circle to an inward or outward going spiral. For this experiment, we keep the angle between the direction of propagation of the electron beam with the magnetic field to be equal to 90 degree so that a nice circular track of electrons can be achieved. Now, since we had already talked in detail about how to determine the potential difference and the current to determine the E by M value of an electron and also their effects on the electron beam track, let us now discuss how to measure the diameter of the circular electron beam tracks formed at various values of potential and current. If you look into the apparatus, you will see a scale is provided over which an eyepiece writes. The scale is so positioned that the crosswire of the eyepiece measures the diameter of the circular tracks. The eyepiece can be moved to measure the ends of the track on a fixed horizontal plane. By subtracting the readings of the two opposite ends of a track, its diameter can be as certain. This is how we determine the potential applied across the electrodes, the current supplied to the Helmholtz coil and the resulting diameter of the electron beam track formed. These are the three parameters required for the determination of E by M ratio. This is how the illuminated track of an electron beam looks in dark. It can be seen that by increasing the magnetic field, the diameter of the loop decreases. And by decreasing the magnetic field, the diameter of the loop increases. It can also be seen that by decreasing the applied potential, the diameter of the loop decreases while by increasing the applied potential, the diameter of the track increases. By changing the angle between the direction of propagation of the electron beam and the applied magnetic field at angles other than 90 degree, the circular tracks become a spiral. But for the present experiment, we will keep the angle fixed at 90 degree so that a nice circular pattern forms and with the help of the scale provided we measure the diameter of the circular track for each values of V keeping I fixed at different values. Using these values we determine the specific charge or E by M value of an electron. You can also perform this experiment while being at home in various virtual lab platforms. The details of such virtual lab platforms are provided in the description box. This is all for this experiment. Thank you for watching.